I don't have a desire to at this point in time. Also, you can't really become a citizen like that. You guys are getting citizenship and residency a little bit confused. Basically, as an American, I can stay in Mexico for six months. So that's what I'm doing. We can talk about that a little later because somebody asked me, is Mexico my one stop, my end all be all? Um, so I can stay here for six months as a US citizen. And then after that, you either have to file for residency or you have to leave the country and then come back. So not a citizen. I didn't have to file anything <laughs> at all. Um, this question says, is the apartment tour on your page different than Penny, your penthouse? Yeah, so my most recent apartment tour was not my penthouse. I have my penthouse on a different channel, <laughs> um, which was my first channel. The penthouse tour is there. I moved into my penthouse in 2020, moved out 2021, and then I moved into my last apartment 2021, and then I just moved out in 2023. So if you want to see that tour of my penthouse, I'll link it down below. Um, and if you want to hear the story of why I had to move out my penthouse and forcibly so I love my penthouse I love her so much everybody know her name was Penny Penny the penthouse and um, yeah, so oh It was a, it was definitely a learning experience. Um, I used to throw a lot of parties um, Anybody and everybody can come over. I, I love hosting. I love cooking for people I love hosting game night, you know all those things was ultimately you know a part of the reason I had to move because of safety so if y'all want to you know catch up on more of that I'll link that video that I did in the description okay this is a good question and I'm going to do my best to answer this okay um, what's a comfortable income to have when moving to Mexico this is a two-part question is the lease process difficult compared to America I'm gonna answer the second question first because it's gonna blow you away absolutely not they do not care about none of the stuff that America cares about when it comes to moving into a place, at least renting. I don't have an experience with buying property here yet, but with renting, the process is so smooth and easy. It's literally one, two, three. So before I moved here, I did not have an apartment lined up that was on purpose. For one, I'm moving out the country to a new place, so I did not want to settle into an area that was very unfamiliar. All of it was unfamiliar, right? So I didn't want to just sign a lease I haven't seen, move into a place that I don't know where it's at or how safe it is or what, what it's like at night, what's the security of it. You know, I just wasn't doing that. So um, I stayed at a resort, y'all saw that, and then I moved into an Airbnb for, I will say about two, three weeks, and I was over that because I was bouncing from Airbnb to Airbnb and I was so tired of living out of my suitcase. So once I decided that I wanted to move into an apartment, oh my God, why is this so dark? I have no idea how long my camera was that dark, y'all. Wow. It must be cloudy. But anyways, so once I decided that I was ready to move into an apartment, I found a realtor, Bia. Y'all know I've shown Bia. Bia is incredible. She's amazing. All you need is your money and your passports and your exit letter. Not letter. It's not a letter. So when you come into the country of Mexico, they give you um, an expiration date, basically. Like, this is how long you can stay in the country and you have to keep that because if you lose that you are in trouble so you have to keep it just keep it with your passport and that's all they needed so they needed uh, the deposit which is basically first month and um, that's to secure the place you need your passport they make a copy of that well you make a copy of it and then a copy of your exit piece of paper and that's it they don't do no credit checks they don't do no proof of income they don't do no work nothing they don't care girl. as long as you got the money they don't care and that's why I knew I didn't have to like plan weeks and months in advance to find an apartment. I literally found y'all, I literally went apartment hunting that day. I put a deposit down and then the next week I was moving in because the owners of my apartment, this is technically a condo, so it's not even an apartment, but the owner of it was still here. So I had to wait till they moved out. But essentially you can find an apartment and if it's available, you can move in that day or move in the next day because they're furnished. So very, very smooth process, nothing like America. Now the first part was what's the comfortable income to have when moving? So this all varies upon so many things. A lot of people have this, you know, notion that Mexico is cheap. Mexico is fairly cheap compared to US. Like if you bring in US dollars to Mexico, you can live a very comfortable luxury life. However, that varies a lot on your location. Just to give y'all a very quick history lesson, I'm in Playa del Carmen, which is a part of the Yucatan 
Peninsula, right? AKA Quanta Root. So Quanta Root is the very last state in Mexico. They started constructing it in 1950s, 1960s. It was all jungles. So Quanta Root is also Cancun, Tulum. And when you think of Cancun, you think of Tulum, you think of vacation, you think of tourism. That's the whole point why this was built, to bring in tourism. So I'm in a very, I don't want to say expensive part of Mexico, but I'm not in a cheap part of Mexico at all. I don't feel a difference than being in Houston. The hookah is more expensive. Depending on where I go eat, the food is more expensive. The drinks are more expensive. So I'm in a tourism hub, you know, so they're going to hike up the prices. Switch over to auto because, baby, my lighting was all out of whack. Um, so, however, if you want to live in a part of Mexico that's more local, you are going to get a lot more bang for your buck because obviously the US dollar currency is stronger than the peso. So right now, today's exchange rate, I don't even know, but it's gonna be around like $17. So what that means is for every $1, you have 17 pesos. However, people hear that and they're like, oh my God, I'm gonna be rich. But if something is a thousand pesos, that's $60. You know what I mean? So it's like, they know that you're gonna, you're gonna think that way, so they're just gonna hike up the pesos. Where I am, like I mentioned, if you move more inner Mexico, I'm I'm on the Caribbean side, so it's, it's more expensive here. Oh my God, I'm just rambling. But a comfortable income to have, I can't, I can't even tell you. I will say it's nowhere near what you would need to make in the United States, depending on your lifestyle and where you move. So a lot of people do move to like Mexico City, which is actually the capital of Mexico. However, Mexico City is getting very expensive because there are a lot of people moving there from other places. Um, Merida, um, Oaxaca, Puerto Vallarta, I, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. But there's so many other places to move y'all that would be more more affordable or less expensive than where I am <laughs> in this tourism place. But this is one of the reasons why I moved here, so. Okay, so somebody just asked a similar question, how expensive or inexpensive Mexico is compared to Houston. So I'm not gonna repeat anything I just said, but I will add that um, obviously housing is less expensive. Um, even though my rent here is the same amount of rent that my dad pays in America. So again, but I'm in a luxury building. I'm five minutes from the beach. I have a lot of luxury amenities I didn't even have in Houston. And I'm obviously paying less than I was in Houston. Um, but in terms of, like I mentioned, food, hookah, y'all know I'm a hookah girl, drinks, it's, it's more expensive. <laughs> now granted, I can walk a little further, like outside of the tourist places and get a better deal for my food and stuff. But other than rent, I am not feeling the difference. I mean, except for it's more expensive. It's actually more expensive than Houston. Um, but that's just where I am. And it's also, you know, due to my lifestyle, the places I go and th the things I like to do, so. Okay, somebody said, are you going to date while you're there in Mexico? Um, so yeah, I am dating in Mexico. I have been on a date in Mexico with a Mexican, Mexicano. Let me stop playing, y'all. Um, yeah, I, I've never, ever, ever been open to dating outside of my race. Never dated anybody outside of my race. If you talk to any of my friends, they will tell you jazz, just jazz is just pro blackity black black black, okay? And um, being outside of America has made me realize that I have been conditioned to the black and white experience and I was under the impression that that's how it was everywhere. Hear me out. So I'm from St. Louis and in St. Louis is a predominantly black population in the inner city, right? So when you, it's very segregated if you think about it. Now the white people are in the outskirts in the suburbs and they stay on their side and we stayed on our side. So when you would come across a white person, it was never typically a good interaction. You didn't really see black people with white people. It just was not, <laughs> it wasn't it. So that's how I was raised, that's what I saw. And especially being in America where white people hate black people, like let's be honest, you may have a few friendlies, but for the most part, it's very racist towards black people. We all know this, the whole world knows this. So in my mind, I'm like, 
baby, I'm not going to the other side. Like, I'm sticking with my people where the love is at, where the culture is at, and that's where I want to be. Since I've been here, they love us. They love black people. They love us. Like, they literally tell me that, like, I just love black people. I love y'all culture. I love y'all personality. I love how confident you are. Mexicans have literally told me this to my face, and I was so shocked because when I came here, I really didn't know what to expect. I've heard stories about how good it is towards us, but I didn't you know, I didn't experience that firsthand, so I didn't know what to really expect, what my experience would be. But since being here, I've never felt more appreciated. Like, I don't know if that's gonna sound crazy, I really don't care, but yeah. So, answer your question, yes, I'm dating while I'm here. And it has kind of opened my eyes to, if they love us, who else loves us? Or who else, you know, don't hate us? You ain't even gotta love me, but don't hate me just because of the color of my skin. It makes you wonder. So for the first time in my life, I'm open. Woo, wow. I'm open to, wow. I don't know. <laughs> I'm open to pasta and lobster, y'all. If you know, you know. I'm moving on. <laughs> no question, but I love all of your channels and you inspire me. Thank you, girl. For all of you who don't know, I do have three channels. This is my third channel. This is my newest channel. She's a baby, and I'm really enjoying just watching her grow organically and just posting content that I like and that I want and that has no structure, strategy to it. I'm literally just going with the wind, and it's just like an outlet for me, and I love it here, so thank y'all for being here. Okay, this is the question I knew we was gonna get back to. So it says, are you going to move to different countries every so many years or just stay in Mexico? All right, y'all. So the answer is I'm not staying in Mexico. I absolutely love Mexico. The only thing I hate is how hot it can get, but it's not really hot, it's just that it's humid and I sweat. I've talked about this in a few vlogs, but I absolutely love Mexico. Like. People ask me why Mexico, I ask them why not. Come on now. If you have to ask that, you've never been. That's it. So um, I do plan on moving and I want to move to Dubai. Dubai started out as just a goal for me to go to the New Year's Eve show. <laughs> the fireworks show. It's been on my vision board for like five years maybe, longer. Because they just go all out for the freaking fireworks show. So I'm always was like... I want to go to Dubai for the fireworks show. I got to go. I got to go every year. Then don't go. I don't know what happened last year that made me look into moving to Dubai. Oh, I know two people who live in Dubai. And I was just asking them about it. And they were just talking about the safety and talking about how it has skyrocketed their careers and their businesses. And, you know, just all these great things about Dubai, which they're both African and they're black, obviously. So I started looking into it and I'm sold. On Dubai so ultimately that's where I think I want to be long term that's where I plan on going after I leave Mexico in a few months so yeah and to be honest I don't know what my future holds and for the first time ever I'm like y'all I'm such a perfectionist I'm like one of those people who have to know every little step every next move and for the first time ever I'm okay with not knowing if I'm gonna be in Dubai forever like I'm okay with not knowing if I even change my mind. Like I just, I'm at a place where I'm letting life lead me instead of trying to lead life. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. I may move to Dubai and then I may move to Bali after that, or I may move to Italy or, you know, I just don't know. But I do know I am gonna be moving around. But Dubai is the move after Mexico. That's really where I wanna go. And I wanna be on that side because Dubai is by Europe, is by Africa, and you know, it's by Asia. It's just better located than where I currently am in North America, so. But I'm definitely gonna take advantage of being in Mexico, visit Central America, visit South America, so, and visit the Caribbean islands. Yes, yes. But yeah, so that's the answer to that question, y'all. Dubai is, She's next up. Okay, this question says, what made you want to move out of the country? The America, the United States of America. Baby, that list so long, we'll be here all day. <laughs> top three. Let's do top five. Let's just do top five. Number one, I'm black. The odds are already stacked up against me. Number two, I grew so tired and 
lonesome of the I don't think I, I don't think I just used that word right lonesome I don't think I used that right but we just gonna breeze over that uh-huh um the hustle culture the work to live culture I as someone who has been working at ass off since the age of 13 that has been an entrepreneur since the age of 17 that has opened storefronts at the age of 19 and it has been teaching people since the age of 22 I am tired baby I something clicked was like I don't want to live like this when is enough enough when is the dollar amount enough like when is it okay to take a break without feeling guilty the answer just never came to me in America so I got tired of that it's number two number three America is not a country it is a corporation everybody in the world knows it that America is not a country it is literally that's why when Americans travel people love it they love the US dollar because we are built to spend we are built to have all these the have all this desire for these things that we really don't need you know like it's just crazy how much stuff Americans have compared to other countries now granted like Dubai they have stuff too but for the majority the economy of America is unlike any other place which is why you know they love it when we come and spend our money because they know we're gonna spend a bag you know so I got tired of that I got tired of feeling like I just need all these things and I just wasn't fulfilled and my soul wasn't really happy and I just I just felt like there was more um I don't know what number I'm on number five the killings this isn't normal <laughs> you know I don't want it to be normalized which is what it kind of was giving especially with social media every single day there's a mass shooting here this person got killed this person every single day it has become so normalized there's no trigger warnings there's no warnings before you're just scrolling and then you see something so messed up that it alters your entire day and this has become the norm. We talk about it and then we move on. And then a few days later or the next day is another incident. I got tired of that. That wasn't peace for me. I was craving peace, baby. I, peace above all. And I love to travel, right? So it wasn't like I wasn't traveling. But traveling just wasn't enough because that post-travel depression was real. It's like, damn, I just had the time of my life. I was the happiest I've been in weeks. And here I am back into this state. My move was kind of abrupt. It was abrupt, but it wasn't. You know, um, I've been talking about this and wanting to do this for over a year. I didn't really like put the pedal to the middle. I really didn't create the plans and stuff. And it wasn't until like weeks adding up to when I was about to move without even realizing it. My soul, yeah, I can't even explain this feeling, but it was like a strong urge. The only thing I can compare it to is when you know your nigga is cheating on you. That's the only thing I compare it to. Like that strong urge to go through that phone. That was my strong urge. Which I don't go through phone y'all no more. I don't do that no more. Okay, I'm not that toxic anymore. We have grown. But all I'm saying is, it's like your intuition. And it's just like that urge. Like you just can't let it go. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That is the urge I felt about moving. Like it was like. I was being pushed without physically being pushed like in every other direction in every other means of being pushed I was being pushed so that's what made me move out the country next question and this is a really good question do you still have to pay taxes to the US have you noticed a change in how your body feels with the new food okay so first question do I have to still pay taxes yes so unless you renounce your citizenship to America, you will be paying taxes forever. You will be paying taxes forever no matter where you move, which is just so bogus. Like you can move out the country for 10, 15, 20, 30 years and you are still paying taxes as an American citizen, even though you don't live there. That is what I mean by America is a corporation. So yes, you still have to pay taxes unless you renounce your citizenship, which I don't plan on doing anytime soon or if ever, it hasn't even crossed my mind. Um, until I can get citizenship somewhere else, I don't plan on renouncing my citizenship as an American. Have you noticed a change in your body? Yes. So I haven't like weighed myself, but I'm convinced I'm losing weight. I can see it in my face. 
and I don't feel tired after I eat. Those are the two things I noticed. I've only been here for like a month. So those are the two things I've noticed so far that I am losing weight. I'm not exercising yet. I plan on it. I'm gonna put that gym to use, don't worry. That and then I don't get tired after I eat. No matter how much I eat, no matter how full I get and I eat to get full, working on that, I don't get tired. Okay, somebody said, when are we getting more girl chat slash vlogs? We miss you. I don't think sister subscribe to the channel, y'all. Somebody go tell her to subscribe. Cause I'm doing the girl chats and I'm doing the vlogs on this channel. I don't think she subscribed. I don't want to ask you anything, but I do want to let you know you're doing the damn thing. Thank you, boo. How did you manifest the life you're currently living? That's a long-winded um, question. So I'm going to try to keep this short. Manifestation is a huge part of my identity. Like, I truly believe without a shadow of a doubt that I can manifest anything I want. Do you hear me? Like, I believe that with everything in my being. Like, it's not just words to me. Like, I literally have that belief that I can manifest anything. So, a part of that belief is knowing my power. So when you ask me how did I manifest the life I'm living, I know my power, okay? So no matter what my circumstance looked like at that moment, I knew my power. <laughs> I still remembered who I was and that I was capable of being where I envisioned myself being. That's first and foremost, because there's no room for doubt, is, is my point. Like, if you're trying to manifest a certain life, you have got to know without a shadow of a doubt. This is what faith of a mustard seed looks like, if you ask me. It doesn't matter when I look around what my environment is, because I know what my future holds. I don't know how to put this into words, but it's like, even though it's your future, you have to imagine yourself having it already. Envision you being where you want to be. It's like tricking your subconscious. You know, so what this looks like, going to go look at your dream homes. I used to drive around and go look at houses for hours every week. I did this for years. I used to take my little cousins to go do it. I used to go ask my friends to come with me to go do it. You know, because I knew that that house, if it wasn't that house, it was a house that looked like that, that was going to be my house. So I was envisioning myself already having that house. Even though the house was in my future, I was tricking my mind to think it was in the present. I used to go and test drive my dream cars. I used to literally go to car shows so I can sit in it, cars that, you know, they don't let you test drive. Some cars you can't test drive, baby. You gotta prove, you gotta prove um, funds before you can even test drive a car. So while I was 18, 19, 17, I was literally going to car shows <laughs> and they love to let you sit in the car, sit on the car, start the engine. So I'm over here dream building. That's how I manifested the life. I already knew without a shadow of a doubt that that was a life for me. There was no doubt ever, ever. I didn't know how I was gonna get there, but I knew that that was the life. Same thing with me living abroad. I knew I wanted to move out the country, but I had no idea what that looked like. I had no idea on the process. I don't know anybody who moved out the country, not one person. But I knew that in order for me to manifest that, I had to already envision myself there. So I would go out the country and feel and imagine me just living here. Like I'm not on vacation, like I live here, you know? I would literally watch videos and watch other people who moved out the country looked at how they did it and then I'm imagining myself doing the same thing. I have a lot of, you know, certain things that I do to manifest. I think I did a video on this. I'll link that below a few years ago. Like the video was a few years ago and I talked step by step on what I do to manifest things. But the life that I'm living, I already lived it. I already knew <laughs> that this was the life for me. So even like Dubai, I'm already in Dubai. I'm already in Dubai, you feel what I'm saying? So you just have to, it's almost, you know, people say delusion, but I don't even think it's delusion because that's my reality. Like, I don't call it delusional. I'm not being delusional because this is real for me. This is something I can achieve. I feel like being delusional is believing in something that's not real. I'm not delusional about what I want because it is real. So yeah, manifestation is everything to me. Like. 
anything y'all and it gets sometimes i like to test myself sometimes i do these little tests where i will literally just say the craziest thing or manifest something very very specific so i want to manifest something very specific like i'm going to manifest a guy across the street with a red shirt on that wave at me it could be something like that and i'll just test it it's just we have superpowers for real but you have to believe it like it is not just something one-off like you can't just try to manifest some money one time like it is something you it's like an exercise like you have to work on it work on it daily every second of the day you have to catch your thoughts you have to think positive you have to replace every negative thought with a positive one it's just it's something you practice and um i've gotten really good at it so now we are moving over to tiktok where i have hundreds of questions definitely not gonna get to all of these but i do want to just you know answer a few so someone said how much money are you saving that's the real question i already answered this and i told y'all a lot of people think mexico is cheap but a lot of places nowadays like where i am the prices are comparable to the u.s so it all depends on your location and your lifestyle okay so a question a lot of people have been asking me <laughs> is do i speak spanish girl poco okay poco poquito a little bit so i am in a spanish speaking country and i'm not a disrespectful person nor am i ignorant so i'm going to learn spanish i've been learning spanish since i've been here um i learn a new word every day i just learned de donde eres which means where are you from and you also answer it the same way so de donde eres houston texas you know so like como tayamas means what's your name so like i'm learning boo don't do me okay but I, why would i know spanish before coming here i mean you could i guess i could i could have but i know a little bit and now i know a lot more i knew the basics when i came here gracias por favor mucho mucho gusto but now i can form a little bit of sentences so you know shout out to the progression and i'm gonna get better and better and that's another reason why i chose playa because even though it is a spanish-speaking country i'm in mexico a lot of people speak english here now that's just because of the tourist zones if you go out baby them locals don't speak no english and we'd be having to pull out the google translate but um i am learning i'm excited to learn and i look forward to just furthering my language like what knowing english spanish i want to learn italian after this which i've heard is easier to learn italian after you learn spanish and then i'm going to learn arabic because i'm going to be in a arabic speaking country as well so fun fact i took arabic in fifth no not fifth grade was that fifth grade that was fifth grade i think that was the first language that i learned like i actually knew arabic in fifth grade and then I never took it again and then I forgot. So it's gonna be very interesting to like refresh that and I wonder and I'm hoping it can like get pulled out of my brain and like it can, you know, light up some cells and I can remember some stuff, we'll see. But I used to know how to speak Arabic, read Arabic and write Arabic. So I'm just hoping child, I'm just hoping. But um, yeah, bilingual queen is on the way, of course. Okay, so this question says, do you work remotely anywhere in the world? Yes. If you are trying to move, hear me out, y'all. If you are trying to move, you got to get a remote job. Not saying that you can't get paid in pesos, but you don't want to. Not even Mexicans want to get paid in pesos, okay? So, it's the best bet is for you to get paid in USD and get a remote job. Even if you apply for residency here, I don't know how that works. Let me not speak on things I don't know. I don't know how that works, but I do know a lot of people who are residents here, black people I've met, and other people that are immigrants from a different country that have moved here, they open businesses and they get paid in pesos and USD. So again, y'all, just because it's pesos doesn't mean that you are living a good life. However, it just depends on how much pesos, okay? So if you wanna work like a serving job here, you're not gonna be making nowhere near as much money as you would as a server in the States. Get a remote job is my, my suggestion. I don't know what's up with y'all interest in my dating life. Just so funny. But somebody asked, I'm going to end this with this because a lot of the questions are just repetitive. But somebody asked, what is it like dating me? And I don't know how to answer this from first person perspective. But I'm going to try my best. Um, from my perspective, dating me is a dream. Like, look at that. Um, I feel like dating me 
is not for the weak. Period. I'm not an easy person. I don't know if that's... I'm not an easy girl. Like, I'm not an easy girl in any aspect, and I don't try to be. Um, I'm very complex, and I take pride in that. I take pride in being multifaceted. I take pride in having multiple layers to me. Like, you think you know me, and then boom! You know, I'm full of surprises. Um, I love adventure. I love spontaneity. I love freedom. I love being happy and joyful and choosing to live every day out. Like, it's just... A brand new start so you don't really it's not for the week because I don't like routine I don't like being bored and when you don't like being bored people who are boring don't know what to do because and there's nothing wrong with being boring there's nothing wrong with being boring you know I know a lot of bored people they live their same life every day they you know go to work they want to you know go home, they wanna go on vacation twice a year, they wanna have a very boring life. And they're okay with that, let them be at home. That is not the life for me. And I think when you're dating me, every day is something new, so you just don't know. So it's not for the week. Like you have to match me or else it's just not going to work. So if you are someone that, you know, you're predictable, you're not open-minded, you're not up for challenges, we're not, it's not going to work out. So, um, dating me is not for the week. And that's what I mean by that. But it is definitely going to be the experience of your life. And you're never going to find anybody else like me. And I can confidently say that. And I can say that because people have told me that. It's not just me being big -headed. Like, people have literally, actually, I have that in video. I have that in video. When I vlogged my last week in Houston, Alex literally said on camera, I don't know anybody like you. But I've heard that multiple times, and I love that for me. That's why what I said in the beginning of the video is kids and marriage in the future for me, hopefully, but I'm not going to be heartbroken if it isn't, you know, because I'll be all right. I'm enough. I'm enough. Do I want a husband? Yes, but he would have to be, like, so spectacular because I'm spectacular. Why wouldn't I? Like, who can you imagine Beyonce with other than Jay-Z? Or Jay-Z with other than Beyonce? They match perfectly. They are both creative geniuses. They're both superhuman. Like, and I don't want to hear conspiracy theories, y'all. Don't, mm, don't start. But yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this question and answers. Thank you again for 1,000 subscribers. 1,000 more on the way. And I will see y'all in my next video. Let me know what you thought about this video in my comments, questions, answers whatever and comment down below and i love y'all and i'll see y'all in my next one Mwah.